Hi there. Violent Penguins here with the best guide there is to decide which starting class to choose in the game of the year of 1927, Dark Souls. Now, you could go about things like a normie and choose one of the regular starting classes like the Warlock or the Undead Knight like in this clip but this is pretty much the only class you see all the YouTubers use in their playthroughs and let's plays. I dare you to find one that does not start with the Undead Knight in the Northern Fortress of Zalakand. I mean just look at it, every video is the same old same old. You run through this corridor, and in classic speedrun fashion, no one even speaks to the two NPCs there that give you your first quest in your adventure, to find the mystical spring of Magaluf to help you rid the world of Marxilus the evil sorcerer. It is almost as if no one ever pays any attention to the great lore and story of that game. It's been a long time since we came to Lordra. By the Nine Divines, what was that? Anyway, let's not dwell on the incompetence of other YouTubers too long. After all, you came to the number one source of Minecraft tutorials and Dark Souls stuff here for a reason. Today, I will show you the 5 top starting classes for Dark Souls on the Nintendo game. God I hate when that happens. Anyway, it was released on that cube thing which is widely known, but did you also know that the number 2 entry on our list has only been released on the special anniversary edition of the game for the Sony Dreamcast? Unfortunately, a Sony Dreamcast back in 1927 cost around 6 billion rakes mark and that could have bought us half a loaf of bread and a dozen glasses of Vegemite to kill ourselves with. So only a few months ago in 2034 I got around. To finally play Dark Souls per neuronal interface on the Sony Dreamplay Cube 360, but boy oh boy was it worth the cost of surgery for the neuronal interface. It does itch, and sometimes some odorous fluid zoos out from the wound hole but all in all it feels pretty good, and you can always scratch it when it itches. I have not perceived any side effects 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 as of yet. Hum. What did I want to talk about today again? I kind of got lost in memories of the good old Reich, back when I was a little girl. Right. The top 5 starting classes of Dark Souls. Here we go. Number 5, The Templar. This class has first been discovered by popular YouTuber Fuck My Parents 420, link in the description below. He showcases the Hoplite Templar starting gear which is a blue tabard as opposed to the more noob friendly white tabard with sun motive of the Sagittarius Templar Solitaire whom you also meet later on in the story and who evolves into becoming the arch nemesis of the Hoplite Templar. The Hoplite Templar is part of the fallen Brethen of the Sagittarius Order from Kingdom Hearts and is therefore very weak against the undead. However, he has the hand and a half sword of the western village which can be obtained early on if you manage to jump into the well at Firelink Shrine. This sword gives you a plus 2 damage against enemies with unholy status such as the skeleton warriors and the larger skeleton lords here. The personal quest of the Templar revolves around retrieving the Stone of Malakath from the Crypt of Chasma Doom which will be shown to some extent in this video, so if you don't want to be spoiled, go to 814 for the next class. Here we are in Chasmodum, and as you can see you should prepare your hand and a half sword as well as put attribute points into the mind abilities, to be able to conjure up holy gust and potentially also put some points into hammer of light eventually, especially when it comes to the battle with Brock and Joe the astral spectre controlling all the skeletons of the former inhabitants of the eastern village. It might be easier said than done, but try your best to destroy the obelisks of lingering on your way down the crypta, so that the skeletons can only summon partially and gain another malus on your holy gust abilities. If you are new to the game, try to speak with blacksmith dog and the blind to level up your tabard, so that you become immune to front stabs like the one that happened in this video. It can save not only your life, but also your purse, as you don't have to spend all your hard earned coin on new healing potions. If you seek for a more short term solution, and do not mind grinding, you can farm the pestilence spirits in the fields of Ashanka to collect all 21 drops of spirit, so that you can afford the spell armor fortify which grants a 20 second lasting bonus to all damage absorptions, including unholy damage such as the one you face when battling. The Sires of Damnation in Chasmodium. That is the Templar class in a nutshell. Let's continue to the next of the classes. 
you might have already guessed correctly when you heard purses. Correct, it is the merchant class. Unfortunately, the merchant is banned in Arabic countries such as Germany and Belgium. Interestingly, the merchant class is only available in the endurance mode of Dark Souls which is set 12 years after the events of the main game. The merchant is one of the survivors of the Act of Avalon, and is driven mainly by the pursuit of prosperity and the return of the status quo in the lands of Lordran. You travel the main villages and cities of the realm, such as the western and eastern villages, Quickenham in the south as well as Anorlando in the north, trying to sell soul that is plentiful in the eastern village to the northmen, and creating a guild of merchants in the process. Very different from the more battle-oriented classes of the story mode and time trial mode. This class is clearly for more intellectual players, and not for me, so let's move on to entry number 3. Enter the Witcher class. This elite warrior of the lands of Poland has been made popular within the Dark Souls series, and resulted in its own spin-off game. Soul Calibur 6. Uh, crap like this, exactly why I hate portals. Come on, let's do this. Anyway, that game wasn't so good so take a look at this Dark Souls footage of the Witcher class instead. The Witcher starts in the northern village of Umbria which remains, under shade by the War of Avalon for the most part. That is thanks to the Guild of Witches which keep away the evil spirits of laughter that lure the children into the forests for them to become were lurkers. This lore is mentioned by the Druid Vati, when you bring him the snail's liver for his meal. After the fifth quest in which he saves Esmeralda from the undead gypsy the Witcher receives his trademark horse, Bonzo, from the Witcher's Guild Master. Moreover, if you move to the eastern village early enough in the game you can find the Blade of Blood and Darkness which is equipped in this video, and has a 20% damage boost against white wolves. Did you know, that the Witcher is the only class who can successfully infiltrate the main location of the Quiranda in the late mid game? Take a look. The guards do not only ignore him, but even bump into him greeting him in the style of their peoples. This can be done by running the two errands for Malacca, when you are given the choice to either abandon Meryl or follow Otakon. Simply give in to the torture, and do not even think about activating auto-fire. He will know it. You can probably see why the Witcher has become not only the most popular class amongst speedrunners in the Dark Souls scene, but also in its own right as clearly Satoshi Yamagachi put the most lore into the backstory of this class. Still, there are two more classes we have yet to discover. Sanic, one of Microsoft's most iconic mascots, after Bill Gates has first been unlocked by popular YouTuber Fighter, PL, link in the description below, please subscribe. Sanic can be unlocked by sacrificing the Maiden's blood at the altar of Chipotle, right after defeating the Gorgonaut. It is a predominantly PvP class and gains much respect from fellow adventurers. Due to this high speed and reflexes, Sanic is able to dodge the volleys of spirit arrows from the Legion of Astra, and is able to conjure magic similar to that of the Hoplite Templar. All in all a very powerful PvP combatant, if played by maestros such as Fighter, PL. Or your mum, when she visits me. Sorry, I did not mean that. I love you. Let us quickly move on to the final, the most rare player class in Dark Souls there is. Here is one of the many story-driven cutscenes which the Dark Souls series is famous for. Directed by Hideo Kojima, and voiced by James Earl Jones it is truly a masterpiece of modern game design and shows that video games should be considered high art. The deprived Keyblade Master class has been added as a tribute to the late J.K. Rowling and her strive for more gender fluidity amongst wizards in our society. The signature weapon, the Keyblade can be retrieved from Kingdom Hearts by fulfilling the quests in the western village, similar to the Witcher's questline. The Keyblade, despite its name, is a blunt weapon that has a 20% damage boost against undead and grants maimed status damage when an opponent is critically hit on the head. 
Moreover, the deprived Keyblade Master class can use many offensive skills such as conjuring up various Disney-themed fun rides. Due to the brutality of the scenes we cannot show you any of the finishes though. Please just take our word for it. Okay I believe you. Overall, the Keyblade class has the strongest damage output of any of the Dark Souls classes and is able to conjure friendship magic. This makes him the most brutal opponent in PvP, and also the most despised due to the unique finishing moves which are all very brutal, just as JK Rowling always intended. Did you know that Dark Souls also paved the way for another spin-off title for the Keyblade class called Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2? Amazing. Tell us in the comments which Dark Souls class is your favorite and why. Mine is the two dogs that has been sewn together in the shape of a wheel because of its agility and ability to carry to Katanus at the same time. Finally, please like share and subscribe if you found this guide helpful.